This lecture deals with the what and why of statistics. Uh, the main objectives include defining the term statistics, examining the role of statistics in the larger research process, and defining key terms and concepts, including level of measurement, discrete versus continuous variables, and inferential versus descriptive statistics. So what exactly are statistics? Well, statistics are numerical procedures which help us organize, summarize, and communicate information. And only information represented by numbers can be the subject of statistical analysis. Statistics is part of a larger research process and involves examining ideas and testing hypotheses in light of theoretical and empirical considerations. The following figure shows uh, a stylized version of the research process. And you can see that at the heart of the research process is theory, that is some kind of explanation about how we think the world works. And so throughout this research process, uh, theory is going to be guiding every step of the analysis. And in turn, the analysis is, is going to be guiding theory. And so we, we begin analysis by asking some kind of a research question uh, based on some kind of a theory that, about the way we think the world works. And once we've asked our research question, we can then formulate some kind of hypotheses that is a set of statements that logically follow from our theory that answer our research question. And in order to test our hypotheses, we begin by collecting data that is going out and perhaps collecting a survey of data or perhaps using existing data sets. And once we have our data, we, we can begin to analyze it. And so this is where we would use statistics. And when we're analyzing our data through statistical analysis, uh, we're ex explicitly trying to test our hypotheses. And so we can uh, then evaluate our hypotheses in light of the data that we've collected and the statistics that we're using. And that leads us to, to ask better research questions in the future. And so you can see that this process is kind of an ongoing cycle in which we're, we're getting more and more refined research questions uh, based on the analysis of, of data. And so as an example, suppose we had the following research question. Let's say that based on theory, uh, we suspected that there was some kind of a racial steering in the housing market. And let's suppose that our research question is, is, do blacks and whites use different search strategies to find housing? Well, our hypothesis may be that uh, blacks are more likely to rely on informal search methods, for example, friends or newspapers, uh, since discrimination in the housing market might lead them to, to work with real estate brokers who steer them towards a limited set of options. Uh, we might think that whites are more, more, more likely to rely on these formal methods, that is, real estate agents or brokers, uh, because discrimination doesn't tend to influence them as much as it does blacks. And so we're going to state a set of formal hypotheses uh, in terms of a set of variables. So what's a variable? Well, a variable is a property of a person or object that takes on two or more values, that is, it varies. And variable categories have to meet two criteria. First, they have to be exhaustive, that is, they have to cover every inevitable possibility. And second, they have to be mutually exclusive. So that means that, that uh, each person fits into one and only one category of the variable. And we typically state hypotheses in terms of independent and dependent variables. So the dependent variable is the variable that's being explained by our analysis. And the independent variable is the one that's doing the explaining. And so in our example, we had two variables. Race, which can take on values of black or white, and that's the independent variable. And then search strategy. And uh, that's the dependent variable. And here we, we define search strategies using either an informal strategy, for example, using friends or newspapers, or using a formal strategy, like a real estate agent or broker. OK, what about data collection? How would we collect data in, in order to answer this research question? Well, once we've stated our research question and we have hypotheses, we need to find a data set. Or we need to go out and collect our own data to test the hypotheses. And so in our example, uh, we can look at information on race and house surging strategies using data from something called the Detroit Area Study. And once we have our data set, we can begin using statistics to analyze the data. And so uh, the type of statistics that we use are going to depend on several different considerations. Uh, among these are the level of measurement of the variable and whether the variables are continuous or discrete. And so what's meant by level of measurement? Well, that refers to the nature of, of how numbers are assigned to the categories of variables. Recall that we can only do statistical analysis on uh, things that have some kind of numbers associated with them. 
And so uh, we have to figure out a way to assign numbers to different variables in order to use them in analysis. And so there's basically four different levels of measurement any variable can take on. That is nominal, ordinal, interval, or ratio measures. Let's start with the lowest level of measurement, nominal variables. Uh, here we assign numbers to the categories of variables by using numbers that are basically just labels that have no rank ordering and basically no inherent meaning in the context of the variable. So some examples of variables that are measured on a nominal level include things like race or gender or religion. Uh, as a more specific example, let's look at race. How would we assign values to a variable like race or, or gender? Well, gender here takes on uh, one of two values, uh, male or female. And so we can arbitrarily choose the numbers 1 and 2 to refer to males and females. Uh, notice that the numbers are just arbitrary labels. I can use any numbers here. I could use 3 and 4, 5 and 6. It doesn't really matter. And notice that the categories have no inherent rank ordering. If I ordered women as 1, males as 2, that doesn't change anything here. So basically, when we're dealing with a nominal variable, like gender, uh, we're just arbitrarily assigning numbers to categories. And these numbers are just labels. They don't mean anything in the context of the variable. And they don't have any kind of rank ordering. The next level of measurement is something called an ordinal measure. And this is like a nominal measure. Uh, the only difference is that there is rank ordering. In other words, we can rank the categories from low to high or high to low. But the numbers still don't have any kind of inherent meaning. They're still just labels. So examples of ordinal variables might be something like social class or Likert scale responses. So you might have run across something that, that, that asks people if they agree or disagree with a, with a statement. And maybe the categories are something like strongly disagree, disagree, uh, neutral, agree, strongly agree. Well, that's an example of a Likert scale, and that's an ordinal measure as well. Let's look at uh, social class as an example of an ordinal measure. Let's suppose that I measured social class as lower class, working class, middle class, and upper class. How would I assign numbers to those categories? Well, I can choose any numbers I want. I can choose maybe 1, 2, 3, and 4 as those numbers. And you'll notice again that the, those numbers are just arbitrary labels. I could have chosen any numbers, uh, 5, 6, 7, 8. It doesn't really matter. But notice that this measure differs from the nominal measure we looked at earlier in that it has inherent rank ordering. And so you can see that lower class has to be ranked below working class, which has to be ranked below middle class, which has to be ranked below upper class. So I can't mix up the order of these categories. Uh, the numbers I assign should increase in value as, as uh, we get into higher values of class. Uh, and so the, the order here matters, although the numbers themselves don't matter. And so I can't, for example, call upper class 1 and then middle class uh, 3 and then lower class 2. I have to maintain the order when I'm assigning uh, numbers to these categories, although the numbers can be any numbers, uh, as long as they maintain the order. And then finally, uh, we have interval and ratio variables. And this is where we have uh, measurement units that have some kind of a meaning in the context of the variable, and they can be rank ordered. Now, the difference between interval and ratio is that ratio has a natural zero and interval does not. But otherwise, they're the same. And so for the purposes of this course, I'm going to treat interval and ratio measures as basically synonymous. And so examples of interval or ratio variables might be something like age, income, or SAT score. Uh, let's take a closer example at age. And so we can measure age in terms of actual years of age. So for example, somebody can be 21 years old, or 30, or 55. Notice that the numbers here have an exact meaning. So 21 would be the number of years of age that a person has or 30 would be the number of years of age. And you can see that values can be rank ordered. And so somebody who's 30 is older than somebody who's 21. Somebody who's 55 is older than somebody who's 30. So it has a rank ordering. Now, these levels of measurement have a specific kind of property, something called the cumulative property of, of levels of measurement. That is, we can express a measure that's at a higher level of measurement, like an interval or ratio, uh, as a lower level of measurement, like a nominal or ordinal but we can't go the up opposite direction. And so for example, let's say that we wanted to turn uh, some measure like uh, years of age into an ordinal measure. What we can do is we can define age ranges. And so maybe we, we define people who are between the ages of zero and five as, as, as one category. Uh, six and 10 is another category. 11 through 15 is another category. And we would assign values like one, two, three, um, to designate those different categories. Now those numbers wouldn't mean anything in the context of age, but notice that they're still rank ordered. 
And so we can basically we can express any higher level level of measurement as a lower level, but not vice versa. When we're doing statistics, we also consider something like whether the variable is, is measured as a discrete or a continuous variable. And so discrete variables are those that have that don't have any kind of minimum unit. Uh, that is, they cannot be subdivided. An example of that might be something like the number of children. Now, you can't have less than one child, right? So uh, this is an example of a discrete variable because it has a minimum unit. Continuous variables, um, in contrast, are ones that take on any possible values in an interval. That is, they have no minimum unit. Uh, an example of that might be something like length. And so you can uh, describe length in terms of, let's say we're using the English system or the metric system. Let's say that we used kilometers which you can be expressed as a lower level unit, meter, um, meters, centimeters, millimeters, and so on. There's no minimum unit that we, that we, can, that we can use. So this is ver an example of a continuous variable. And then when we're doing statistics, we, we have to make a distinction between descriptives and inferential statistics. And so uh, descriptive statistics basically refers to the characterizing um, the properties of some sample drawn from some larger population. And so when we do descriptive statistics, we just take that sample and we describe its characteristics. Inferential statistics, in contrast, involves trying to make some inferences about the characteristics of a larger population based on the characteristics of that sample. And so both are different kinds of statistics that we'll run into in this course. So let's look at some actual analysis uh, for the, the, the example of uh, race and search strategy using the Detroit area study. And so here we, we have some uh, data from a study conducted by Ren Farley. And he's looking at the different search uh, strategies uh, used by blacks and whites. And so you can see, for example, that uh, whereas 43% of blacks use a real estate agent or a broker, 60% of whites use a real estate agent or broker. That means that 17% fewer blacks than whites use a broker. And so in terms of like formal search strategies, it looks like whites are more likely to use formal strategies than blacks. What about informal strategies? Um, well, we can see that, that uh, things like newspapers, talking to friends, uh, looking at rental signs are all more likely to be used by, by blacks than whites. And notice also that there's an asterisk uh, next to the 43% of whites who use a uh, real estate broker. Uh, if you look at the the bottom of the table, it indicates that there's some kind of a probability value associated with it. So in fact, what this author has done is used an inferential statistic technique to figure out whether this relationship that's found in this sample also holds in larger population. And so we can evaluate our, our hypothesis in light of our statistical analysis. And so we can see that, that um, in general, um, it looked like blacks were more likely to use sort of informal means, whereas whites were likely to use formal means. And that's exactly what our theory had predicted. And so gen in general, we can revise our theory and ask new research questions in light of the, the hypothesis that we generate. And here, our, our theory was supported. And then we can basically go on to ask more refined questions now that we know that that basic theory is, is, is demonstrated.